I thank uh, Professor Misra and uh, then all the all the people sitting in the audience uh, because uh, all of us learn from each other and this is something which is unique. We have never experienced it, and we would like to learn from each other. And uh, and hence the talk uh, that the first part of my talk will be uh, the antenatal care that. Uh, uh we uh, we um, are proposing or we have since uh, the starting of like 23rd of march the lockdown started and how do we went ahead and every day almost we have modified our antenatal care and there are n number of instruction and guidelines that are coming up and we are evolving so this is one of that part of uh, that antenatal care that we have taken uh, the initial part of my talk the subsequent part will be uh, if a covid patient pregnant patient uh, be encountered then how do we manage we all know that there should be eight antenatal visits during pregnancy and i am talking about low risk pregnancy but in covid era you can change on to instead of eight you can have four antenatal visits for a uncomplicated or an on uh, or a low risk pregnancy and that can be scheduled for say 12 weeks antenatal visit 30 36 weeks and 40 weeks that has been recommended by one of the recommendation by the who but first how do you know that this is a low risk pregnancy is there are certain guidelines how do you classify them and you take a history do the uh, do some uh, risk calculation taking into the um, past medical surgical condition the mother is having her reproductive history and the current pregnancy history one of the chart that even we also use little modification of that chart has been put up over here but then you can always modify according to your yeah, according to things that are missing or that you want to add onto this chart. So by using this chart, what do you do is every patient, we calculate the risk, whether the patient falls into low risk, high risk. High risk are called more times, more antenatal visits to the hospital, to the doctors. Low risk are given almost most of the consultation or antenatal visits are at the local hospital and with a uh, with a uh, obstetrician and that should be limited to four visits in the antenatal period so first is risk scoring and hence even we also in our uh, eopd we have pasted this evaluation form risk scoring form in front of our eyes it is difficult to remember and hence every patient we calculate the risk and write in that e eopd form for format so we use this copland uh, risk scoring form there are other form that can be used and one can remember that if a patient is diabetic hypertensive previous cesarean these are all falls into high risk patient coming on to antenatal clinic of a low risk non covid patient and you do not know the covid status of this patient you need to see it government says you have to see it your conscious says you have to see it what all you can do is you can have weight and blood pressure examine the mother for pallor edema and fundal height and investigation wise hemoglobin at the time of booking and at second trimester one at before just before delivery you need to have a borh blood group report urine routine microscopic and the routine test that is being advised in the at booking period so these are minimum investigation that is to be asked for the patient to undertake during pregnancy what about the ultrasound everybody is busy in asking for ultrasound at six weeks eight weeks please do not order for that restrict your ultrasound to 12 weeks maximum if there is some history otherwise in a in a patient who is low risk has to have one ultrasound that has to be around 18 to 20 weeks whereby you look into all congenital malformation the cervical length, length so that you you plan that whether this patient is at risk for preterm delivery you need to have a uterine artery pi 
or intrain artery doppler study to assess if the mother is likely to develop preeclampsia or not so this is what you need to restrict your ultrasound to 18 to 20 others you can do if it is a it is a high risk uh, patient so different guidelines are there one of them um, dr sonia you have said just um, before um, this meeting so different guidelines also says that you have to triage or screen all patient before entering your facility limit the number of women attending to the clinic each day and hence in our opd also we have extended our opd days so that we see less number of patient per day then change antenatal visit after after risk stratification as i told you and the number of people accompanying the patient what we have done is a patient on wheelchair should be accompanied by another person but rest of the family member if not if it is a normal patient normal pregnant woman who can walk down rest all relative to stay outside the hospital only the pregnant woman is allowed inside our clinic so similarly similar strategies needs to be um, uh, taken since the the disease is spreading very fast so uh, you can have non physical assessment in an open environment we have not done that we have from from a room strategy we have shifted on to our corridor for patient uh, history taking or examination the however the per abdominal examination are done in a room with a plastic uh, partition in between and instead of using a stethoscope we are using a fetal doppler for fetal heart sound listening the fetal heart sound and provide one stop contact in one stop patient can have an antenatal visit can give her a investigation and can can have uh, the ultrasound examination if required so what is being followed in our uh, opd what do we we follow we are expected to see high risk before uh, this covid also we see only high risk pregnancy so the patients are asked to have a daily consultation a detailed history over phone is take, uh, is recorded all previous record are asked to be sent on a whatsapp number and they are they are there are files which are being kept um, in uh, in the computer then the patient if the patient is a low risk then we usually talk to the gynecologist who have referred them and to talk to the to the treating obstetrician we have kept a timing of 10 to 12 am in the morning so we fix for that if a patient only will be counseled and no need for hospital visits then we keep that call for 2 to 4 pm video conferencing call to the with the patient then if the patient has to have a antenatal visits we usually ask what doctor was asking was when, what is the principle of doing a covid test for a patient who is coming to the hospital to have all the visits together we are at present we are asking to have a covid test done at the local hospital have a report and have this antenatal visit in the antenatal visit the patient gets his registration done antenatal checkup done all investigation are given then patient has an ultrasound examination simultaneously if needed then patient can have a prenatal invasive testing that means if the patients are required to have an amniocentesis because the patient already have got a covid test so we do a uh, invasive testing or amniocentesis on that same day if the patient is not for invasive testing after ultrasound we ask the patient to leave the on the hospital we send all the reports by whatsapp or email we are facing little difficulties in sending by email that the patients are not uh, properly writing it so that's a bottleneck for us as of now but uh, with email uh, with whatsapp we are we are uh, quite comfortable with that if there is some abnormal finding in the ultrasound still we ask the couple to leave the uh, the hospital we fix up a video conferencing call in the afternoon that is 2 to 4 pm and then we talk to the couple about this the ultrasound finding and what is next to be done this is a couple contacted us from singroli mp for uh, this thing without any uh, registration in our uh, this thing this is a new patient so we had a discussion with the couple we had a discussion with the uh, consulting uh, obstetrician 
she has got deep venous thrombosis of one of the leg. See, in fact, she sent uh, photos of her leg also. This is one of the parents that mother of the pregnant patient were counseled over WhatsApp uh, calling. So we can uh, manage it. Initially, it was difficult and gradually we are catching up with it. This is one of the patient which was managed by doing an ultrasound at PGI Chandigarh. Dr. Saab was doing that ultrasound and then I was giving an opinion. So such, such difficult cases can be managed from a, from a long distance also. So this was managed just a few days back. So coming on to the next uh, part, if you encounter a pregnant patient with Corona or COVID-19, they are at equal uh, risk that uh, Dr. Sonia has uh, sent that uh, guideline also says that uh, pregnant patients are at equal risk. So at least we feel that they are, their immunity is little suppressed, but as of now, whatever data says they are at equal risk. So we are at ease. But uh, I must tell you all over India, there are more than uh, 1500 deliveries of Corona positive patient have, uh, have been recorded till now. So it's uh, uh, quite a good number of patients are being seen. Uh, the symptoms are same as that in general population. And most of them will have a mild symptoms. That is from that um, same guideline I have taken out that 96% has got mild symptoms, 4% have severe and 1% are critical. So we need to uh, have uh, the COVID team should be associated with obstetrician and then manage this 1% and 4% of severe and 1%. So 5% of your pregnancy can land up here. So, but fetal infection, whatever data says, whatever the multicentric, uh, the combined studies that has been, it is not teratogenic. Except one report, it is not found to be excreted in breast milk. One report shows that RT-PCR have isolated in uh, uh, the COVID-19 in breast milk. So need to be a little careful, but then as of now, it is not excreted in breast milk. There is no increased risk of miscarriage or growth restriction to these women. So you need not feel that these, these women will have a growth restriction, but there are reports of preterm labor in those women who, who have got severe symptoms. So be careful about preterm labor in patients who are hospitalized with severe symptoms, transmit, transmitter, um, transmission from an infected woman to her baby during pregnancy or childbirth. There are few reports and few from India also. From Allahabad, I heard one of the patient, uh, the baby was positive tested at 18 hours of life. So uh, probably there is some vertical transmission and all newborns infected, they have recovered and discharged from home, from the hospital. Uh, whatever uh, colleague I have encountered, I have heard about, at least the newborn has got a good outcome. Uh, so advice to pregnant women is, pregnant women with heart disease have got, are likely to have more severe symptoms. So heart disease, even if it is congenital or acquired, they have to have these, uh, to keep that in mind. And they should not have these, all these uh, celebration at home, eight month celebration, uh, some godhvarai do not attend all these marriages, which we are seeing that those attending marriages are becoming positive and strictly avoid contact with someone having symptoms of COVID. Uh, we can have first trimester evaluation uh, of all those patients over phone and then evaluate and urgent medical attention, if the patient has got bleeding or pain in lower abdomen, you need to, at that point, you need to rule out uh, missed abortion or threatened abortion. And one thing one must remember is ectopic pregnancy. By, by denying them hospitalization, we should not deny the, we should not, uh, we should be more careful of picking up complication of pregnancy, even in early trimester. And general advice needs to be given I must emphasize that water intake and high protein diet during pregnancy. Most of them are, uh, are uh, like uh, worried in this situation. They are unable to visit hospital. They are unable to contact their doctors. And what will happen to their unborn baby? 
this is a, a background uh, tension that is going on with the pregnant patient and hence their diet is becoming poorer and poorer and every visit you must emphasize on having a high protein diet and that is locally available high protein diet diet that we all of us uh, know about it and the women should be asked to have fetal movement count after 8 months any time she feels less movement she must report to the hospital then hospitalization is that in any other uh, pregnant patient any other uh, covid patient but pregnancy termination is not an indication if the woman becomes covid positive and early pregnancy there should not be any intervention term pregnancy patient not in labor then monitor the mother and fetus with daily fetal movement count by physical profile and non stress test one can do a doppler so that it is um, reassuring pregnancy termination and mode of delivery is individualized uh, whatever report says that 80% of these covid patients are landed in having a cesarean section so there should be limited number of internal examination and a a high degree of uh, of uh, preparedness for doing a cesarean section in such women that doesn't mean all pregnant covid positive patient need cesarean section they can have normal delivery and many of them have delivered normally but i must cause cause us you that you must avoid giving tocolysis tocolysis can cause pulmonary edema and as an obstetrician without thinking about it we uh, prescribe it and then patient go on taking it uh, will uh, enhance their uh, severity of symptoms uh, before giving uh, steroid for fetal long maturity we need to be careful it probably will help both mother and the fetus max sulf if a patient has got respiratory symptoms magnesium sulfate for fetal neuroprotection that we give in less than 34 weeks should not be given otherwise with mild symptoms one can give magnesium sulfate so intrapartum management uh, you need to be careful about your fluid overload patient should be in proper position oxygen by this thing if patient has got a, a spot less than 94% uh antiviral and antibiotics as per the protocol that is uh, to be given uh it is not contraindicated as such in a uh, covid patient and you need to avoid your internal examination and there should be low threshold for doing a lscs neonates dr kirti has already pointed out how do we we shift the neonate from that labor room to a to a little distance place and how to take care of the newborn and breast milk we had a discussion about it and i need not uh, go into detail of it we at present encourage breast feeding if the mother can take care of the baby like uh, the all this hygiene then breast feed should be given otherwise express breast milk can be given collecting that so um, we need to take care of pregnant women whether they are covid non covid both of them so we are in a catch 22 situation here is obstetrician who takes care of two life twice prone for uh, like two lives prone for covid we plan our routine antenatal care please friends like all those obstetric practice plan your antenatal care do not call the patient 6 weeks 8 weeks 10 weeks and then do an transvaginal ultrasound and then 14 weeks please plan your antenatal visits minimize your ultrasound examination 80% of patients will be cured and pregnant women are at not at higher risk vertical transmission is doubtful it is not excreted in breast milk and hence breast feeding should be given and follow safety norms and i thank you all for uh, listening to us what i would like to inform that we have got a landline number for the routine uh, 1:30 to 5 o'clock and uh, sorry 9:30 to 5 o'clock uh, contact and we have got a uh, um, this thing uh, mobile number also that is 8765974008 and that's a that's a number which is 24 into 7 we would like that we would like to interact with the doctors who who try to uh, face any difficulties and we would like to receive patient's information and patient 
uh, can contact us in case of emergency in those in this emergency number but the routine number is available for routine care thank you all